I am Sean Kent Hayashi with Saucon Valley Cute and Cuddly Schnauzers. These three puppies are from the same litter. This one looks just like dad. This one looks just like mom. And this one is a surprise. But aren't they beautiful? You might be wondering, what? What are they? This little puppy is a toy schnauzer. And some of you may be thinking, what's a toy schnauzer? And others of you might be thinking, that can't possibly be a schnauzer. But I want to show you her Embark DNA. I'll show you that she is in fact, DNA genetically, a miniature schnauzer, even though she's going to be smaller than the standard for a miniature schnauzer. I'm going to talk with you about her health results that show up on her Embark test, and then also the traits that uh, Embark helps us to understand in our puppies. So here we go. I named this puppy Burberry because her coloring. I'll explain more about her coloring here in just a little bit and what it means. At the end of the video, I'll also share with you that by adding her to my breeding program, if I were to eventually, obviously she's too young now, she's six weeks old, but if I were eventually uh, to keep her and add her to my breeding program and uh, breed her with one of my boys, what might we get from such a union? So stay tuned. You'll see all of that in this video. Embark and breeders planning tools. This is Burberry's Embark DNA test, and it shows you right up front that she is 100% miniature schnauzer. The second page gives you an overview of miniature schnauzers, along with a fun fact here. The third page in an Embark DNA report shows the maternal line, and you can see what's happening here where this, the background comes from. The fourth page begins the trait information, but I skip over this and I go right to the health information. Let me show you why. I bred Burberry. She is Liberty and Truffles puppy. And so I knew that I was likely to get a puppy that is clear of all of the known issues in schnauzers. Now there's one thing right here that says notable result. Let me explain what that is. This is what Embark shows when you click on the information, the notable results. A notable result means we don't expect your dog to develop a clinical disease based on their genetics, but it can be useful to inform decisions for veterinary care. For example, with ALT activity to establish a baseline blood value for your dog. I'll explain more about that in just a second. Breeding, there's a 50% chance a variant for a condition could pass along to their offspring, and you can learn more about that. So what we know from the Embark test is that Burberry's baseline ALT level may be low normal. Okay, now why is that really important? That's The only thing is, is that when a, when a veterinarian does a blood test, if ever needed, on her ALT activity, hers is going to be naturally low. Frankly, this is just like most little dogs. Most little dogs that I've seen have baseline ALT levels low normal, and Burberry's is low normal. So back to the health report and why I just love Embark tests. We can see here that Burberry is clear on all the breed relevant, as well as 251 other known issues in dogs. Burberry is clear. Now look at all this. Just this goes on and on for pages of what she is clear on. In other words, the Embark test tests these known issues in dogs 
And it gives me, as a breeder, incredible confidence that I am breeding a very healthy dog. So Burberry would not be passing along to a puppy an issue, any of these issues. And so as long as I breed her to a male who also is clear of these known issues, the puppies that result from that will also be clear of all known issues. Again, this is why I was very confident that Burberry would be clear of these issues because I knew from her mom and dad what their results were. So after I confirm breed 100% Schnauzer, yes, and health results, then I come back and look at the fun stuff, the trait coat colors. So here we see what we knew or what I knew she had to be, a uh, capital E, little e, meaning truffles, her dad is a dark color, and her mom, Liberty, has two little E's. So she's going to inherit from both parents, one, and thus, we know from her color, she had to have a capital E. And I have a dog sitting in my lap who is just begging for attention. <laughs> Next, we see the K locus. And the K locus helps us to understand that she's likely to have a patterned hair coat. So in this case, when you look at the patterning in her coloring, that is indicative of the KY, KY that she has here. Next, we see the intensity loci. So we know that she is interme intermediate red pigmentation. Let me show you now what her red intensity index is. To get the red intensity index, you have to go into your Embark Breeder profile online. Then go into the traits section. Once you're in the traits section, you'll see coat color here and then details. You have to click on the C details. Now you have to scroll down to the bottom of this page and say show subloci sub details and then you scroll down to the red intensity index right here and what we can see is that she would be called, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six out of ten. So she has six out of ten and you can see the sub loci details where she has red, red. And if I breed her to a male, for example, who has both red, red here, I have a much stronger chance of getting a dark red color puppy from that breeding. All right, back to the report itself and the traits. So Burberry, on the A locus has ATAT, -AT, which is likely a black, brown, and tan coat pattern, which we definitely see in her. And what determines the black or the brown has to do with something coming up here in just a minute. This is not a dimension that I normally look at because I don't have dogs that uh, typically have the little D, the dilute, and next is the Coco. Again, I typically don't have dogs with that. Now here is something that's very important to me, the B locus. When we have two little Bs here, that means the dog is going to have brown hair and skin. So brown nose, probably green eyes, which this little girl has. Saddle tan is not something that we typically see in, um, but for some reason, it's showing that she is likely saddle tanned patterned, which she, we could say is, but that's somewhat of a surprise for me to see that. Next, we see the S locus, and we have a capital S, which means she's going to be solid colored, but if I bred her to a dog that had this little SP, they could have party colored Dogs. Now, if you're asking what does a party color mean, it's a dog that's basically white with some color on top of the white. So when you think about some of my dogs, 
Huckleberry would be an example. Um, let's see, Tea Time is an example of a dog that is a party color, meaning there's little SP, little SP, no capital S. Capital S means it's a solid colored dog. All right, uh, these other, um, I don't ever have any dogs that show up as Meryl. There's just, Meryl doesn't really run in schnauzers typically, or at least in, in the schnauzers that I breed. Um, not likely to have a roan coat pattern, not likely to have a harlequin. Again, these typically just are not schnauzer um, things. But in terms of furnishings, it says she will likely be furnished. And what that means is she has a mustache, a beard, eyebrows, uh, coat length, likely a long coat, likely non-shedding, light shedding. This is, uh, schnauzers are hypoallergenic and non-shedding typically. Um, very unlikely to be hairless, right? Unlikely to be hairless, yes. And uh, we see some others uh, not likely to be albino, likely to have a wavy coat. These are all fabulous things. There is one part of the Embark DNA test that I don't pay much attention to since I have schnauzers that are smaller than the norm. And it's the body size information. So on this report, it's saying that she will likely weigh 15 pounds full grown. And that is just absolutely not the case. When I look at her uh, current weight at six weeks, she's charting to be between eight and 10 pounds. You see some additional trait information here like altitude adaption, appetite, I just find all this fascinating, but it's not uh, typically something that I would uh, be concerned about. The last thing in the Embark DNA report is the coefficiency of inbreeding. And the coefficiency of inbreeding has to do with the portion of your dog's genome where the genes on the mother's side are identical to those on the father's side. And in schnauzers, the average is 26%. And you can see here that hers is 24%. My goal is always to go below the average. I do have some dogs that are significantly below the average, but in this case, we're at 24% for Burberry. Embark has some great breeder tools, and one of them is called Pair Predictor, which helps you understand the likely COI, coefficiency of inbreeding, on a mating. Let me show you what If I were to breed Toffee, aka Maui, to Burberry, well, let me show you what would happen. First, they would be clear of known issues in dogs. In other words, both Toffee, Maui, and Burberry are clear. So the genetic health is fantastic. And next it shows me their coefficiency of inbreeding. And it says that the breed average is 26%. And in this case, if I were to pair these two together, the likely coefficiency of inbreeding on their puppies would be 23%. So below the average for miniature schnauzers. Then as a breeder, when I want to understand the genetics, the traits, I come use my Dog Breeder Pro software and I can see Maui, who is the son of Penny and Bentley. So in other words, he's a dog that I bred and Burberry. And now I can see their traits but I can press this little button right here and forecast offspring, which is fantastic. So if I were to breed these two puppies together, eventually, obviously, this is a year and a half or more away, but 12.5% um, of the puppies would likely be uh, tan points minor white and 12.5% would be brown. In other words, that chocolate liver color with tan points and minor white and 12.5% of the puppies would likely be recessive red. In other words, they would look like Maui or sweet tea, honeybee. And 12.5% would be solid brown, so solid chocolate or liver. 6.3 would uh, be the black with tan points, 6.3 brown with tan points, 6.3 recessive red, 
uh, 6.3 brown recessive red. So what that means is this, this would be recessive red with potentially a black nose, and this would be recessive red with a brown nose. And then we see the opportunities here for some party colored, both tan point party, brown tan point, and then recessive red. So you can see the combination of these two together could produce quite a variety of puppy colors. Hopefully it's making sense to you now why I am such a raving fan of the Embark DNA tools. If I have a waiting list for puppies, which I often do, my waiting list might indicate that someone specifically wants a party color puppy like this. So when I know that more people on my waiting list want party colors, like Jackson and Daisy here, then I can intentionally breed together mom and dog, mom and dad who are going to produce party color puppies. If I know, however, that someone is wanting a black and silver schnauzer puppy, I'm going to intentionally breed that way. I also am just so grateful to Embark for all that they do to get the science right on this, to help us breed dogs that are going to be healthy, sound, genetically clear. And it's for this reason that I am so confident in giving a 10 year genetic health guarantee on all my puppies. And I think that you're going to see this is the future of dog breeding, that breeders are going to be able to be confident like that when they produce well-bred puppies. Thank you to Embark, yay.